How you doing? How is conference? Yeah. Nice? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm Zalim. Uh, I'm working on Kotlin and WebAssembly uh, to chain at JetBrains. And uh, today I'd like to explore, uh, explore with you uh, what we have uh, present state of Kotlin and WebAssembly and cover a bit uh, things uh, what we are working on, uh, what you can see in the future. Um, I guess uh, everyone here know what is Kotlin, right? <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> okay, uh, how about uh, WebAssembly? Wasm, please rise, rise your hands. Oh, a lot of folks, uh, not everyone, but don't care, uh, don't worry, uh, that's okay. I will uh, cover a bit uh, WebAssembly, what is, what is it uh, to be on the same page, uh, so yeah. Um, our agenda for today is, uh, yeah, as uh, I uh, promised, we start from uh, basic things, uh, what is WebAssembly, uh, then we switch to uh, Kotlin Wasm, uh, we will take a look uh, what Kotlin Wasm bring to us. Um, then we will work uh, on Wasm runtimes, there is a lot of uh, Wasm runtimes, but in this section we will focus on uh, Kotlin uh, needs uh, in, in case of uh, uh, Kotlin Wasm. Um, also, uh, later we uh, will speak about uh, some Kotlin and WebAssembly web use cases and take a look uh, on Kotlin Wasm in action. And we will finish uh, our journey by looking at the state of tooling. So let's move on and start with uh, WebAssembly. Uh, WebAssembly is a binary instruction format uh, for stack-based stack virtual machine. And uh, there is uh, a bunch of key advantages of uh, WebAssembly, of using WebAssembly. Uh, first is uh, portability. It's designed to be uh, platform and CPU independent, what uh, makes it easy uh, web use. Uh, using for WebAssembly, like you compile your code to WebAssembly once and uh, run it uh, anywhere from browsers to uh, even IoT devices. Uh, safety and good isolation uh, makes Wasm great choice for use cases like uh, uh, plugins or running untrusted code. Mm. The sandbox model of WebAssembly allows you precisely control which resources are uh, available for this specific WASM model, uh, which uh, improves security uh, and uh, stability of your final application. Uh, of course, portability and safety is uh, nice things, but uh, uh, in case of WebAssembly, there is no place for uh, trade-offs uh, uh, regarding performance. So, the ability to show near to native performance is uh, one of important things uh, in WebAssembly design. Yeah, I, uh, I speak about WebAssembly design. Uh, it's not something finished. Uh, it's evolving, and uh, uh, from day one, uh, all these uh, things, what I'm uh, talking now, uh, all these advantages is important things, and still, right now, while we're working on WebAssembly new proposals, uh, these uh, uh, properties are important, and uh, community working on WebAssembly trying to uh, keep it, uh, trying to... Uh, uh, to find uh, right, uh, right trade-offs uh, here. Uh, one, one thing what impressing me regarding WebAssembly is uh, there is uh, streaming compilers. Uh, what, what does it mean? Uh, it means like uh, while your application, your runtime, say browser, downloading your uh, WebAssembly binary, uh, there is streaming compiler compiling it uh, during this downloading, and when downloading is finished, your application can be started immediately. And it's not interpreted, it's uh, 
uh, it's compiled and provides uh, quite good performance and pre predictable performance. Of course, uh, there is also uh, optimizing compilers uh, uh, to reach uh, great peak performance. Uh, lightweightness, uh, uh, here is uh, two aspects of lightweightness. Uh, one side is uh, binaries, WASM binaries, and other side runtimes. And um, WASM binaries typically uh, smaller than uh, your uh, native application for the same application, uh, which could lead to faster downloading, faster loading the application. Uh, it will take uh, less memory on, uh, on your storage. It will take less memory uh, in the RAM. <coughs> uh, you can say, like, uh, everyone say around, like, uh, Storage is cheap uh, nowadays, RAM is cheap nowadays, but uh, still there is use cases where uh, size of binaries is important. Even uh, web, uh, where we download things, uh, size is super important, uh, or uh, uh, IoT devices, small devices, or uh, serverless functions where we, we, uh, we need to quickly uh, run new application, and it could uh, uh, it should uh, work uh, quickly and uh, qu uh, could die quick quickly as well. Uh, and yeah, uh, it's yeah. That's it about uh, uh, binary size. Uh, regarding uh, size of uh, runtimes, it tends uh, like uh, WASM runtimes uh, usually uh, also small because uh, WASM specification is uh, also uh, small, small and simple enough, and uh, it allows to develop uh, small and lightweight uh, runtimes, um, what makes uh, these runtimes suitable for a wide range of uh, applications. Um, another thing impressing me about uh, uh, WebAssembly, and specifically about WASM runtimes, is like uh, what uh, WASM runtimes able to uh, instantiate new WASM model. Uh, uh, in other words, to say, run your WASM uh, in microseconds. Uh, yeah, I, I repeat it uh, once more. It's not milliseconds, it's microseconds. Uh, so when uh, something comes to your server, for example, for serverless function, in micro microseconds, you can instantiate new model you don't need to care uh, about state, uh, about uh, keeping or don't keeping state from uh, previous call. You just can run new instance work and uh, uh, quickly kill it. Uh, yeah, next uh, uh, important advantage is uh, interoperability. Uh, WebAssembly can uh, easily be um, integrated with uh, existing uh, systems. Virtual, uh, virtual machine itself uh, uh, quite friendly with uh, uh, embedding cases. Also, uh, WebAssembly designed uh, to uh, provide a good interop between uh, different languages. And also, there is uh, uh, another proposal uh, which is uh, in progress uh, called WASM component model, which uh, takes interop between different language to uh, new, more high level, uh, to new level, uh, providing a safe and effective way to communicate between uh, models compiled uh, uh, from different languages. Uh, you know, WebAssembly uh, originally was uh, designed for web. Maybe it's, uh, it, it's more precise to say, uh, what uh, WebAssembly is designed with uh, web needs uh, uh, in mind, but uh, actually it's not strictly tied to web. Uh, it's uh, quite generic, uh, so uh, nowadays it's, uh, it's used uh, outside of browsers as, as well. There's uh, a lot of projects uh, uh, using WebAssembly outside of browsers. Um, kind of, uh, there's usages uh, uh, in cloud and edge computing, uh, for plugins and extensions, uh, in embedded uh, blockchain, and in many other cases. Uh, yeah, you know, WebAssembly is nice technology, 
And a lot of things now they happening around WebAssembly. And uh, actually, yeah, I, in general, I'm impressed by WebAssembly. I, uh, yeah, I, I fan of WebAssembly, uh, and I think I can speak about it for a long time. But uh, I think uh, for now we have enough context, and uh, let's move to Kotlin Wasm. Uh, so, uh, we have great language, we have uh, a good ecosystem, we have a uh, great community, friendly community. Uh, so, uh, let's add to uh, all this uh, WebAssembly. Kotlin Wasm aims to combine these uh, two powerful technologies and uh, allow developers to write efficient and portable uh, code and build wide, wide range uh, applications from high, uh, high performance web applications to serverless functions or IoT, uh, something for IoT. Uh, so we built new compiler for Kotlin Wasm from, from scratch with uh, following goals in mind. Uh, we want to have fast compilation because we think it's important to have uh, under the second uh, round trip uh, uh, for daily development. <coughs> uh, sorry. Uh, and uh, to achieve that, we generate uh, WebAssembly binaries uh, directly. We don't use uh, any other tools, uh, external tools for that. And right now, we're working on making it uh, incremental. So uh, it, it also means that we don't do much uh, optimizations uh, during, development, uh, during development, but uh, when you build uh, your production build, your release build, we, uh, we use uh, external tools like Binarian to improve our time performance and size. <clears throat> uh, we want to have a good integration with hosts uh, and uh, like, uh, for example, to avoid leaks uh, for cross-model links. We want to have uh, convenient and fast interop uh, with hosts uh, so, for example, we provide out-of-the-box uh, uh, declarations for many browser APIs, uh, so you can easily, uh, you can easily uh, access to browser APIs, you can easily work with uh, DOM API, like uh, on this example. And uh, we want to have a small binaries. Four kilobyte is size of this uh, example. For WebAssembly, we introduced two new targets, uh, Kotlin, was Kotlin targets. Uh, WasmJS uh, is uh, it's, uh, for environments where we have uh, JavaScript, uh, mainly it's uh, for use cases inside browsers. And another target is WasmYZ for outside of browser use cases where we usually don't have uh, JavaScript. So we don't depend on any JavaScript uh, APIs to implement our internal things. Um, yeah, it's just uh, for a pure Wasm VMs. Sorry. <clears throat> so there is uh, many runtimes, uh, many Wasm runtimes, but uh, in this section, I'd like to focus on uh, popular ones and their compatibility with uh, Kotlin. To run binaries produced by Kotlin, uh, Kotlin Wasm to chain WebAssembly virtual machine have to uh, support garbage collection proposal and exception handling proposal. However, exception handling proposal is uh, kind of uh, uh, optional. Mm. Better to say, for experimental purpose, uh, we able to produce binaries uh, from Kotlin without dependency on exception handling. Uh, uh, so it allows you to run some of your Kotlin applications in VMs, uh, which support only GC proposal, because uh, you know uh, uh, VMs can support everything uh, at the same time. So they prioritize, uh, usually they prioritize garbage collection uh, and later they will work on exception handling. So 
to unlock users as quick uh, as possible to allow uh, starting working on some nice things uh, more quickly. We have such of uh, experimental flag uh, to turn off uh, uh, exception handling depends on exception handling. Uh, speaking about uh, specific uh, VMs, uh, inside uh, browsers, it's the, it works uh, out of a box in most of uh, in major browsers, with one exception. Uh, specifically, it works uh, well in Chrome and Chromium-based uh, browsers. It works well in uh, Firefox, and one exception is, uh, for now, it is uh, Safari. But also there is uh, good news. Uh, nightly builds of WebKit and uh, Safari uh, technology preview already uh, can run web Kotlin Wasm uh, examples, uh, but uh, it's still not on by default. You need to apply some magics, but uh, there is some hope. Uh, and uh, back to uh, Safari. Uh, Safari is built on top of WebKit, uh, so there is some hope. Uh, uh, what uh, uh, official support for GC proposal uh, will be arrived uh, in foreseeable future. Hope so. Uh, what about uh, outside of browser uh, VMs? Actually, uh, we have a good progress outside of browsers as well. Many of them supported uh, uh, all required uh, uh, proposals. Uh, specifically, uh, Node.js, uh, uh, you can just take Node.js, uh, or last version of Node.js, and uh, run the Kotlin Wasm without uh, any additional setup. Uh, just in case, Node.js is uh, JavaScript runtime, uh, which also able to run WebAssembly thanks to V8, uh, which uh, use it under hood in Node.js. Uh, next uh, virtual machine is Dino. Dino is also JavaScript runtime with uh, WebAssembly capabilities. Uh, WorkID is a runtime used by Cloudflare workers. Uh, it also supports uh, all required uh, garbage collection, uh, all required uh, proposals. Uh, uh, it basically it means like you can write your business logic uh, uh, in workers using using Kotlin, Kotlin Wasm. Uh, next one is Wasm Edge. Recently, they made uh, a great progress and uh, uh, pro provide supporting for GC and exception handling sub, uh, support. Um, and uh, they are going to release uh, this version pretty soon. Um, Wasm Edge is a lightweight and extensible WebAssembly runtime for cloud and edge uh, applications. And by the way, uh, uh, you may you may hear, hear about uh, WebAssembly support in Docker. Uh, they, uh, I know, about two years ago announced uh, built-in support uh, uh, of WebAssembly inside Docker. And at that time, first VM used by Docker was Wasm Edge. And uh, next next one is Wammer. They also uh, recently released a new version, uh, 2.0. Uh, and there is uh, some GC and exception handling support uh, as well. Wammer is runtime with small footprint and quite popular for uh, small devices, for IoT use cases, embedded things. Uh, next things, uh, Wasm Time and Wasmer. They both working on Wasm GC support. Uh, both aim to be runtime used by other projects to provide uh, Wasm support internally for, um, I don't know, for plugin system, for example. Uh, these projects use uh, uh, four games, for example, uh, like uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator or, or in, clou in cloud pro by cloud providers like Fastly. So, uh, so far we know more about Kotlin, we know about WebAssembly uh, and Wasm Runtimes. So what we can do with all of them together? Let's look at some use cases. Uh, very many places where WebAssembly is used today and uh, we don't want, we actually don't want to limit uh, our users by specific use cases and we try to build, we, uh, we focus on 
uh, core things to provide an ability to use Kotlin uh, in any WebAssembly runtimes. But uh, I think there is uh, two main use cases where you can get the most from Kotlin and WebAssembly combo. And first one is uh, uh, developing web applications. Another one is cloud and uh, edge computing. Let's speak more about uh, these cases. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so uh, about web applications, <coughs> we start from web applications. Um, it, it looks like browsers are still the most popular environment for WebAssembly. Uh, and with Kotlin Wasm, we can easily uh, access to browser APIs. You can easily uh, work with uh, JavaScript libraries because we have dedicated uh, JavaScript interop. But uh, for web applications, uh, for web application development, we offer something uh, better. You can guess, I think. It's uh, yeah, Compose Multi-Platform. Uh, cross-platform UI framework allowing to share UI between uh, your mobile applications, Android, iOS, uh, desktop, and web. Here we have uh, here we have uh, Kotlin uh, Conf application uh, which run natively on Android, on iOS, and inside browser. You can follow the link and open uh, uh, this application inside your browser. Um, so for web version, uh, it uses uh, Kotlin Wasm. Uh, the main reason of using WebAssembly for Compose web applications is performance. According to uh, Compose multi-platform benchmarks, uh, uh, WebAssembly version is about two times faster than JavaScript 1. Both Kotlin Wasm and Compose for Web have uh, matured since uh, last Kotlin Conf and now are in alpha, and we encourage you to give them a try. Another question is uh, why Web? Why uh, you may need to target Web uh, with your Compose application? It's a quite uh, fair question. and. Uh, I personally think web is uh, a good platform to target, and here's why. Web is open platform, which means there is no one company controlling uh, platform. So uh, uh, this company, there is no one company which uh, uh, can easily block your application or break your application. Uh, you know. Uh, Nowadays, we have browsers everywhere, and also they mostly up to date, uh, thanks to Chrome, uh, who makes it normal. Uh, next thing is uh, application distribution. In case of web applications, uh, it's quite easy, and uh, also, uh, which is important, is under your control. And uh, in case of web application, it's uh, uh, much easier to uh, to make sure it's, uh, your application is always up to date. Uh, so there is less headache with old clients, with uh, fair migration. Next thing is application running. Um, it's quite easy to run a web application. You know, you just open some URL and just work. You don't need to install anything. But uh, with uh, modern web APIs, you can install it if you want. Uh, with modern uh, web APIs, you can do a lot of things like uh, show notification. You, uh, your uh, web application can work offline uh, independently uh, on its installed or not installed. Uh, when, when you install your application, web application, um, it can look like uh, look and feel like a native application, which uh, uh, could be quite quite nice. And last but not least uh, is thanks to WebAssembly, uh, web application can show uh, near to native uh, performance. So web version of 
Gotten Golf app will help us to explore all these uh, benefits in practice. Uh, web version is built using open technologies starting from Kotlin and WebAssembly finished by HTML and Web APIs. It could be opened in any browsers, basically. Uh, right now we are using JavaScript uh, as fallback for platforms where level of WASM support is not uh, sufficient, like Safari, you know. <laughs> uh, in terms of distribution, it's quite simple. It's just a bunch of uh, uh, static files which could be hosted anywhere. In our case, it's uh, GitHub pages. And uh, updating the application is also quite easy. It's, it's easy like uh, pushing to GitHub, that's it. Uh, let's play a bit uh, uh, with, uh, with this application inside browser. You also can uh, uh, open by Oro and uh, Oro inside your uh, devices and try to repeat after me. Uh, let's move. Uh, so basically we uh, start from uh, main screen. Uh, we can switch between tabs. Uh, here we have map. Uh, let's back to uh, our agenda. Here I want to find uh, current session uh, where it is. Uh, yeah, it is, uh, and I'd like to bookmark it. Don't ask why, what for? Here it is, yeah. Uh, we get notification what uh, our session is start and we need to hurry up. Uh, actually, this uh, notification in the middle of session uh, is like uh, uh, Easter egg uh, because, uh, yeah, normally, uh, your mobile version of Kotlin Conf app uh, show uh, your notification for bookmarked uh, session only before and after, not in the middle. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, Easter egg comes to my mind a uh, couple of days ago. It was, uh, uh, it was easy to implement with web APIs. It was easy to implement uh, with uh, Compose things, uh, but uh, it's possible like hard things for usual environments to update, update your applications. But in case of web application, thanks uh, to what uh, uh, distribution is under our control, updating was easy and quick. Uh, also, uh, you can notice like uh, how smooth uh, scrolling, uh, uh, how it, uh, yeah, it, it works great. Uh, how about offline mode? Let's, uh, uh, let's check how offline mode working uh, in case of Kotlin Conf app. Uh, so to check it, uh, I open DevTools and uh, open offline mode, uh, emulation offline mode in DevTools. Uh, after that, let's check, uh, no internet, great. Uh, and it works, let's uh, search something, uh, type uh, wasm. Okay, nice, there is uh, great talk. Uh, uh, building libraries for the next uh, 25 years. Mm, sounds great. I want to bookmark it. Nice. That's all fine, but works. Yeah, back, uh, back to the topic about installing or not installing application. Of course, you, can, it, you, you see it works without any installation. Just open and work. But if you want to, you can install it. Let's take a look how we can install and how it uh, works like uh, when it's installed. It's a standalone application, even visible in a window switcher. Uh, we can switch there. We can change size of uh, uh, this window. Uh, it updates uh, super quickly. We can change zoom, uh, zoom level. And uh, what one fun thing, uh, it looks like mobile application now, doesn't it? Yeah, it actually works well on mobile applications as well. You can open it to your mobile browser and it works. Even you can install it along of uh, other applications. Where is Web1? Where is uh, iOS1? Do you know? <laughs> and. Uh, when you run an uh, installed version, it looks like native application. There is no browser UI around, and it works well. Um, yeah, by, by the way, here we have uh, two pictures. 
One of them is a uh, web version of uh, Kotlin Conf app. Another one is uh, iOS version. Uh, the order is uh, choice chosen randomly. So question is, uh, where is web version? What do you think? Let's, uh, let's vote who think uh, web version is on the first one. Don't try. Okay, maybe more. Okay, uh, quite small number. Okay, uh, how about second one? Maybe second one? Well, more folks thinking uh, uh, it is second one. Uh, okay, thank you for voting. Uh, that's a good question. Actually, I think I don't remember <laughs> which one is which. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I'm kidding, but uh, the main point here is uh, like, uh, actually it's uh, close to impossible to distinguish where, uh, where is uh, which one, this picture so close to each other. Uh, we can uh, take uh, diff of images. Here we have uh, differences. Uh, here, magenta color is uh, where the pictures is different. Some Wi-Fi signal is different. <laughs> uh, let's zoom some fragments. Uh, here we have some magenta here. Another fragment, uh, here we have more magenta colors. Uh, all of them around uh, font rendering. Uh, uh, yeah, font rendering uh, a bit different. Uh, I think we'll improve font re rendering over time, but even now it's hard to distinguish uh, these uh, two versions without magnifier and if you're not expert in font rendering. That's the point. So try it yourself. Here's a link to the application again. And by the way, don't forget to, uh, to vote. And I hope this time you do it uh, with web version. <laughs> yeah. Second. <clears throat> yeah, here I want to share a bit of experience uh, about uh, adding web version to Compose application. Originally, there wasn't a uh, web version of uh, uh, application. So, um, in short, adding web target to Kotlin Conf app was uh, quite easy. It took me like about an hour uh, to, to get a working version. Um, and there is uh, another example actually in the community like Confetti app, uh, uh, which recently get web versions uh, thanks to folks from the community and John uh, specifically. Uh, by the way, check Confetti and other uh, applications uh, built and supported by John. Uh, there is great uh, examples of using Compose multi-platform, and many of these uh, examples got uh, web version. Uh, one more example where porting of uh, uh, Compose application, Compose small demo to web took literally 10 minutes. Adding, yeah, just repeat. Adding web target to existing Compose application is easy. Uh, you know, uh, adding uh, one more target mm, uh, to Compose application or to uh, Kotlin multi-platform uh, project uh, is easy when there is already more than one target. It's uh, usually it's challenging uh, to add second one, but uh, adding third and uh, next ones is uh, quite easy. Uh, anyway. Try, try it, uh, and uh, yeah, that's uh, your turn to try to write and migrate your Compose application, your Compose library. Uh, yeah, uh, also uh, helpful, helpful uh, thing. Uh, uh, join Compose for, for Compose web uh, uh, Swag channel in our Kotlin link uh, Swag. It's uh, quite. Uh, a useful channel uh, where you can get uh, updates about uh, regarding Compose, uh, Compose for web, and uh, of course, uh, don't hesitate to ask there any questions and uh, don't hesitate to share your experience, uh, your projects. Uh, what about uh, outside of browser? Uh, 
Yeah, I, I already mentioned uh, like WebAssembly is not limited uh, uh, by browser use cases and face a lot of projects using WebAssembly outside of browsers. But the uh, question again is why? Why is WebAssembly getting popular outside of browser? What kind of benefits you can, you can get from uh, using WebAssembly outside of browser? Uh, simple answer is uh, because of uh, WebAssembly advantages, what we already discussed. But uh, importance of specific property might be different depending on use cases. Let's take a look on some combinations, like uh, for embedded and IoT uh, use cases, we, we have small devices, so lightweightness is uh, super important because usually these uh, devices are very limited in terms of resources, uh, uh, in terms of RAM and storage. Uh, uh, next is uh, portability. Uh, in case of uh, embedded uh, target devices, uh, uh, in embedded market uh, is quite diverse. There is different, uh, a bit different CPU, CPU, a bit different uh, amount of memory, maybe some additional difference in capabilities. So ability to compile once and run everywhere helps a lot here uh, for uh, embedded development uh, uh, to make uh, development and distribution uh, easy and uh, enjoyable. Another thing is uh, performance. You know, these uh, uh, devices are uh, quite limited in terms of computation uh, capabilities as well. And uh, you, uh, you usually don't want to exchange lightweightness and portability uh, with uh, sacrificing uh, performance. And WebAssembly allows you to have uh, all three together. Uh, Let's, uh, let's take a look uh, at plugins and extensions. Uh, WebAssembly is designed to be a uh, compilation target for other languages. So basically it means you, uh, your clients uh, uh, can write plugins uh, in any language. It allows uh, uh, to use uh, everyone uh, their favorite uh, programming language. But our favorite programming language, Kotlin, right? Anyway, it's a quite, uh, uh, quite uh, important uh, property for plugin development. Uh, uh, another one is uh, security. Uh, WebAssembly allows uh, to run securely uh, any untrusted code uh, in sandboxed environment. Uh, and in some cases, in some plugin systems, it, it's very important in some uh, other uh, plugin systems, it's less important, but another part of this is uh, what, uh, uh, thanks to WASM modularity, uh, modular system, uh, you actually can isolate your plugins from each other, so you get not only security, but also stability. Mm. And last one uh, for this section is uh, portability. So, uh, thanks to portability uh, property uh, WebAssembly, you write and compile your uh, plugin once and uh, use everywhere. You you don't need to care about some uh, like which operating system there, which uh, CPU there, IRM or Intel, which kind of uh, CPU bitness there. <coughs> So all of this uh, together makes WebAssembly a great choice for uh, plugin systems. Uh, for cloud and edge computing, the main metric is uh, response time. And uh, here we have uh, uh, the most important uh, property for, of WebAssembly is uh, performance. Uh, uh, also, next thing is lightweightness, uh, what we already uh, speak before. Uh, WebAssembly VMs are uh, lightweight and provide lightning fast inst instantiation of uh, WebAssembly, which is important uh, for code starts. It also allows to save your uh, RAM 
and storage, which is uh, usually imported for uh, cloud use cases like serverless and edge computing, where you're trying to compute uh, your things uh, as close as possible to your data or uh, your devices. <coughs> And good cross-language interop also uh, important here, allowing, uh, it's allowing to use code across languages. It uh, gives you more freedom in terms of uh, language choice. The reason for other cases is more or less similar. Uh, <coughs> it seems like uh, uh, WASM is rarely used outside of browser without YZ, uh, and WASM uh, stands for WebAssembly System Interface. It's a group of uh, APIs uh, specifically designed for WebAssembly and uh, with security in mind. So we understand how YZ target is important for outside of browser usages, and we introduced dedicated uh, target for YZ. Right now, it's uh, based on YZ Preview 1, but we actually working on supporting YZ 0 0.2 and uh, also, of course, on component model, which is important part of uh, YZ, YZ 0 uh, 0.2 support. Let's uh, take a look on the demo. Uh, second, uh, yeah. Uh, this demo is uh, using a YZ example from our uh, WASM uh, examples collection. You can uh, open the uh, URL and uh, you can find the other examples. But we right now need a specific example for YZ. Here we have a, a simple example which prints uh, some strings, uh, some constant strings, uh, and later uh, it, uh, it prints uh, uh, some timestamps. Uh, to for, for that, it used uh, uh, API from YZ Preview 1, but uh, directly using this API is not convenient, so we introduced some uh, helper functions. These helper functions uh, uh, actually uh, call another uh, function uh, by providing specific call, uh, specific call ID. And... Uh, this function using uh, scope memory allocator to allocate piece of memory uh, using uh, for return failure. And uh, finally, we can uh, call our imported uh, function. Uh, after that, we check uh, return failure. If it's zero, uh, everything OK. So we read from allocated memory result. Uh, otherwise, uh, if it's not zero, uh, check uh, will throw exception. Uh, so let's uh, let's run it uh, in Node. Yeah, it's uh, print uh, something uh, our uh, our text and uh, some timestamps. Uh, let's run same program inside Dino. Yeah, seems working. And uh, let's try same thing in Wasm Edge. Works works okay as well. <laughs> Let's take a look on Kotlin Wasm uh, inside Cloudflare workers. Well, uh, we have uh, not much time. I think I speak it, uh, skip, skip it. Uh, let's uh, take a look on, uh, speak about uh, tooling, uh, uh, what we have uh, in terms of tooling. You know, JetBrains is a company working on tooling for developers, and as a tooling company, our goal is providing the best development experience, uh, developer experience at the market. And Kotlin Wasm has great support in our IDs, uh, IntelliJ, Fleet. Uh, we are actively working on improving our debug experience, and also we're working on build tools uh, to get uh, round trip. Uh, uh, shorter uh, with incremental compilation and uh, in editor preview, for example. Uh, yeah, let's take a look on Kotlin Wasm tooling in action. Uh, here we have a uh, project with uh, Kotlin. So we, we create a project uh, with our web wizard. Uh, we put our uh, name for project, uh, project ID, and we choose here uh, web, web uh, target, and we don't know what, uh, 
uh, new generated project, uh, unzip it, and uh, we open it uh, in Fleet. Uh, let's uh, explore what we can uh, in Fleet. Uh, firstly, we run the project uh, to make sure uh, it wor if it works, uh, press the button, looks like working. Let's try open something. Uh, it is a web part. Uh, we, we navigate to uh, some common part. Uh, it is a common part of uh, this small application. Here we have a, a button. We have animation part. Uh, you, you can notice uh, like how I navigate between files, navigate between class, everything uh, what you can expect uh, from a uh, modern uh, editor with uh, smartness, everything is here. So uh, let's keep, uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look on debug capability. Uh, yeah, here's uh, some uh, uh, piece of code uh, what uh, added to this example we take uh, we put breakpoint here and run application press the button uh, and it stopped we can uh, walk uh, over our stack trace uh, we can inspect uh, our variables or uh, object uh, structures uh, seems working resume application and we see uh, some updates we do I did before uh, yeah, oh, takeaways. Let's look up what we had today. First of all, you know, WebAssembly is cool technology, which manages to be portable, fast, safe, and efficient at the same time. Kotlin is awesome. We know it, right? Uh, Compose for Web is future of web application development. Uh, it's easy to run your uh, Compose application inside browser and uh, to have uh, close to native uh, performance. Definitely worth to try. And uh, the use cases outside of browsers are promising. Thanks to small VMs and small binaries, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we get a quick startup, we get a good isolation, and everything's still performant. And tooling received a lot of improvements last year, and it's good, but it should be the best, and we are working on it. Uh, specifically, debug experience and fast interop is uh, our top priority uh, for now. Overall, WebAssembly and Kotlin are great together, and our ultimate goal is providing the best end-to-end -end experience for any kind of application. Enjoy it. So uh, if you want to know more about Kotlin Wasm, uh, visit koto.in slash wasm, uh, join WebAssembly and Compose for Web channels in Kotlin Slack for future updates, discussions, uh, and to get help. Uh, that's it. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, if you, you can find me in social networks by last name, so get, don't hesitate to ask me anything about Kotlin or WebAssembly or together. Of course, you can do during conference, you can uh, find me and catch, and uh, we can have a uh, uh, conversation about uh, anything. Uh, so, thank you for your time. <laughs>